now I'm back with another video. Today we got dark Bible stories that you never heard. Joe Rogan and Michelle Dalt. Dalt. <laughs> it's on both screens. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. The Joe Rogan experience. Have you read Universal. the whole Bible, by the way? I did when I was a kid. Yeah. I actually had Bible class in Florida. When I moved from, <laughs> <laughs> when I moved from uh, San Francisco to Florida, I was 11 years old. That's crazy. Back when I was younger, we had Bible study, but they was paying you at the time. My big brother wasn't shit. He going to tell, I had the right answer for real, but I ain't discerning it right. I was young. I got to show myself some leniency. He told me the wrong answer on purpose so they can call on him. He told the right answer and they paid him. I should kick him square off in his ass to this day. Let's continue. He just made me remember that. I ain't think of that memory in 10 years plus. Old. And it was a complete polar opposite experience of the country. I lived in San Francisco with two parents who were hippies <laughs> in Haight-Ashbury. So we were in the middle of like, we lived near Lombard Street. We were in the middle of like the hippie anti-war revolution of the 1960s. And then I moved to Gainesville, Florida. My stepdad was going to, uh, he was becoming an architect. He was a computer programmer and then he switched careers, became an architect. And so he was going to a University of Florida at Gainesville. And so we were there. So now all of a sudden I'm around alligators. There's fucking alligators everywhere. <laughs> it was like, what are you, are you people retarded? Why do you have giant monsters everywhere? This is so ridiculous. So we had uh, alligators, um, super weird, swampy weather, and religion. Yeah. Religion was in the schools. Like in public school, you had Bible class. And they mm -hmm. also paddled you. It was the first time I'd ever been hit by uh, a teacher. They, in they, I got in this fist fight with this kid, and they whacked us with a paddle. One of the things that a lot of people who have read the Bible or they have read a portion of the Bible I definitely is, don't think I read the whole thing. Well, yeah, that's the thing. It's not very many people do, and that's why I asked, because a lot of it is, is kind of tedious history, and there's a lot of he begats, and there's the whole line, you know, of Christ, all the ancestors, and the, the whole delineation of all that. And... Um, where I come from, we were encouraged to read like a verse of the Bible, but they would always tell you what it meant. Right. And so I kind of went against, I used this little pen light and like did it like late at night, but I read the whole thing cover to cover when I was eight. And if you read like every single book in order, you start to find that there's a lot of really beautiful, 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 you know, places in the Bible, but there's a lot of stuff that's really violent. And mm. then there's a lot of stuff that contradicts itself. And it's because it was written in different time periods by different authors and different languages. And it also has a historical context. And so generally there's a lot of stuff that people leave out when they teach the Bible because it's really hard to explain. Like what stuff? Well, there's, um, for example, I mean, this one's taught a little bit, but David, King David, I'm sure mm -hmm. you've heard of him, like as of David and Goliath, mm -hmm. but then he became a powerful king. And he saw this woman who, this woman is often talked about Bathsheba. He sees her bathing on a roof. And where we came from, we were taught like she shouldn't have been bathing on the roof. Now, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, he, <laughs> he demands that she come to him. And he, she is the wife of a soldier of his named Uriah, a top soldier. And he commands her to lie with him. And she becomes pregnant. And then King David, who is the same guy. Hold on one second. Okay, we back. Who had the slingshot of David and Goliath. Mm -hmm decides that he's got to figure out how to get her husband back so that her husband can go sleep with her and her husband won't do it because he's loyal to the army and he's he comes back but he sleeps like at the, the floor of the castle you know trying to wait be, a minute he's trying to get the husband to go back with the wife so that she the pregnancy will seem like it's his oh boy yeah so he, in the bible in the bible dirty david yeah exactly and it doesn't even end there so uriah won't do it because uriah is loyal to david oh boy and so then david sends him to the front lines to have him be killed oh boy so that he can marry his wife and get away with that child's not being um illegitimate, a bastard illegitimate. oh boy mm -hmm. and then god kills the child because you know needs to make the point that david was and think about poor bathsheba i mean she's just been like rung around her husband gets killed all these things her kid dies because god is punishing david and her and husband got killed because he was loyal to the guy who got her pregnant absolutely that's not a story a lot of people hear oh my god but you can fact check that one if you yeah that's true people just nitpick 
whatever they want out of the Bible and then they just rephrase that. And the way they do interpret it, it can be interpreted in multiple more ways as well. It even down to the etymology of the words. They use the words the wrong way. Like starter for starters, like eternity. Like like um sixteen chapel. Sixteen. Okay, so like sixteen chapel. I know something mean what sextus and sextus is basically sex. Um Is they referring to like the sex of the person or just sex literally like uh and the etymology of teen is underage so 16 chapel means like 16 chapels mean like to literally like r word like children or something it's all this shit is weird for real it's very weird how they say come out the closet but you go in a closet to confess your sins to what is he a priest uh pastor or whatever that's in that little phone booth so all this it's weird it's contradictory it's some things i agree with because it's not even a matter of philosophy people that came before me or even currently it's through my own trial era and tribulations of seeing my own errors and mistakes or even seeing other people's mistakes being um hold on damn i want to lose my point Damn, did I lose, how did I lose my point that quick? Hold on. <laughs> this is crazy. Well, my bad. I try to... It slipped from my fingers. I try to... Like, what was my point I was trying to make? But all of it is weird. We're, we're using words the wrong way. It doesn't have the meaning you think it mean. And just even that, again with this... 16 chapel and the etymology of those words and then you go in a closet to confess to weird ain't the word odd ain't the word or cringy it's something there and then when you get deeper like all the baby bones and things that was buried underneath churches i think earlier i was referring to like oh yeah that's what i was referring to i got my point again um, what I was referring to, um, what I do agree with, and that was me seeing my own situations and other people's situations. You will suffer of your father's doings. So that can be your mother or father. And you got to think your whole for this planet. They say, well, let's just say 15, 20 generations. You all that, like from your, your your mother's side, your father's side, your mother's mother's father's, like, it's all relevant. It's still in you through epigenetic memory, epigenetic trauma. So that's deep too, and that's real. I see that to be true. Not to nitpick and pick what I like out the Bible or whatever, but you will suffer of your father's doings. That's very true. And it can be a positive too. It's a positive to that. Like if your father was a artist or whatever, his kid may inherit that gift as well. Well, he ain't going out there and earn it. Like, no, it was bestowed upon him. He's not totally good at it. Or he may be more susceptible to excelling at a faster rate than his contemporaries or whatever. So I see that to be facts. It's not the matter of me nitpicking and seeing what I like at the Bi in the Bible and what I nah. That's very real. So, but let's continue. Like oh, no, I believe you. <laughs> I'm good at that. I'm good at just, like, yeah, I'll, now so, I'll go argue it. <laughs> Want to hear another Bible story? Sure. Mm. There was a woman named Tamar, and she had been married to uh, one of three sons. I think there was three. And uh, her husband died before giving her a child. So as was the custom in the time and perhaps the law, she married the brother of her dead husband. And that man would not give her a child because he didn't want to have a child in his brother's name. And so they're allowed to have more than one wife. But this woman was not allowed to have a child. So he does something they call onanism. So he like spilled his seed on the ground instead of inside of hers that she couldn't have a baby. And so God gets really mad because Onan will not impregnate her. And so Onan gets killed too. And so then her father-in-law decides not to marry her off to the youngest brother because two of the brothers are already dead, right? And he doesn't want to lose his only son. So he just 
banishes her and she has nothing because what does a woman have at the time if she doesn't have a husband or a child? She has no ability to make a living in the world. And so this man is um, the father-in-law is really unkind to her in a way that she decides she needs to take something into her own hands. And so she dresses up like a prostitute and goes to the side of the road. And as he's traveling on the road, she puts herself in front of him and, and offers her services. And he sleeps with her. And he does not have payment on him for some reason. And so he gives her his staff, which is um, a token of his word or something. So at least he's paying his prostitute. And uh, she gets pregnant from this. And he orders her when he finds out she's pregnant to be stoned to death, you know, to be killed and oh executed because, you know, she's not allowed to have a baby outside of wedlock. And she said, OK, but let me just return this staff to you that um, I got from the father of the baby. And so then he ends up protecting her and she gets to have the child. And that child is in the line of Christ. Whoa. Yeah. So really interesting things. I don't know what you're supposed to learn from that story. Um, when I was a kid reading this, I would ask, and of course, no one really wanted to tell me, <laughs> because she was rewarded for that. That's the interesting thing. It's the, the stories are crazy. It's it's just if you're being honest and if you believe in God, but you also know that people are full of shit, you have to put all this stuff through a filter. You just sure. have to, and it doesn't mean that there's no God. <laughs> of course, it doesn't mean that. It just it means there's probably something in these stories. But we have to be real careful with what that something is. Well, and yet, I don't profess to know. I don't, I don't know why. They condone slavery. The Bible sure. condones slavery. Mm -hmm. like, right on, they do. And what they tell you, as the slave, as the cattle, that you obey your master, it's the same people that had you and your ancestors in these conditions, and it's still relevant through epigenetic trauma through you're being chemically molested, being what they put in your food and you putting it in your body, not even knowing that this is what this do. And you think it's cool because the FDA approved it. You gotta follow the money. Who who paid the money, the back end for them to conduct that study to give it the green light that is safe for the body? Them, all in cahoots. And these are people that bestowed this religion on you. Religion means like to literally rely on an external source. And the, they gave you this, the people that, the forefathers that did that to your ancestors. And now you so religious and you would kill about it at this point. Took your identity. So people out there that claim to be God's chosen people, God's chosen people go through the most adversities and been through the most in history. And even currently, it don't take Ray Charles to see who is God's chosen people. You can see in the hieroglyphs, the Vimanas, the obelisk monuments. You can see the depictions. You can see what they look like. You can see their tone. You can notice everybody else on the planet. All the Asians got their culture and um, language. Chinese, China, Korea, Korean, Japanese, Japan, African, Africa. Everybody got their language except for so-called black people, void of color. The color of my... Or if it's no color, they say it's no color and white is every color combined, right? At the end, they want to call them the the white color, the, the Christ conscious. And if they ain't calling you black, they're calling you African American, which is two continents. It's a misnomer. These the same people that use trickology with the words and all that. And they gave you a name, a race, and a religion when you were born. Yet you must have despised the free lunch, but they gave that to you free of charge after they kicked your ancestors square off in their ass. They hit box big as fuck. And you somehow believe in this now? Fuck you. I heard the Junko Furuto story. I see the horrors. I see the things. And that happened to the most innocent people. You ever been jumped? I've been jumped before. I feel like you in the infinite suke yome for 55 fucking years. So imagine being flayed alive, boy, you are all the ancient torture methods that's on display in the museums nowadays. They go through that and God, Jesus, Allah, Akbar, and none of your religious figures come and help them. They heart light as a feather and all. Just for you to say, uh, he sacrificed fire sins. Oh, the people that did it, the perpetrators are going to be dealt with. That doesn't fucking matter. I can look at it from their perspective to a degree. Being if I went through that, I don't forgive the perpetrator or none of your guys. Fuck all of them for life. At that point, I'm converted. I'm, and I got this, that's the villain's backstory to why he became the villain at that point. 
it ain't no all of a sudden I go in heaven with a white cloak on and bow down to your god bitch ass all day and then be coddled and hugged and loved past my pain all of a sudden. No, I know I experienced that and it was real. I don't care if we in a computer like simulation, a dinker codes, binary code, I wouldn't give a fuck. It's real and I went through it. This hurt. So I'll be damned. There's people that's going through that. And then you want me to believe in this external source? Fuck you. That's what I got to say about that. What I know is real is my internal dialogue, my gut feeling, my chakras, the ancestors that compose of my genetic composition that make up of me today. And if you believe in angels or demons, you can't have one without the other. Um, so I guess pretty much what I give it up to when I get up in the morning, again, I don't like to use that word, but that's what the mass majority understand it as. So that's the word I'm going to use. I give thanks to source because God ain't nothing but dog backwards and all that. And it was God's with the S plural anyway. So source that everything stemmed from source. I give thanks to source thyself for getting up for the day. Um, my ancestors. Yeah. And I bless my food before I eat it, or I bless my water before I drink it as well. Uh, even when I'm in the shower before the water runs, like, give thanks for what it does that I'm aware of, and I list it off, and the things that I'm currently not aware of that it does for me. Like, I understand water is one of the main conductors to electricity, it holds memory, and most of our body, our vessel resides in water, and that's for great reason. So, but that's how I feel about that, that religious shit. I'm so past that shit, it ain't even funny. It's like, yeah, and I would never turn back. I was indoctrinated with it once growing up. But yeah, I couldn't blame myself. I was young, impressionable. Possibly, realistically, chemically imbalanced. I grew up in the projects. I projected my experience. Um, the epigenetic traumas. Like, some things I didn't even go through in childhood, whatever, but it still was in me. During that, I guess for a while, and then it was activated, and I didn't know why I had these worries and feelings about certain things. So most of the time, I feel nothing, but it's not in a negative way. It's just like, um, yeah. And you did that to my ancestors. And, and these the same people that give you this, that took your, your identity, though, and stole the land and tell you to go out and get it honest. But then they give you this, the key to the afterlife. They live heaven here on your earth to a degree because they can't take that sound like that. But yet they tell you when you die, you can get paradise. All that shit goes against my common sense and logic. So I feel like, fuck you. I'm my own God. I'm going to go where I want to go after this. It ain't going to be no art. Put them in, in, in Beijing. Nah. I don't. I just make it make sense. Like, everything. Like, Because can't nobody give me the answer to that. Why people go through the most innocent go through that. And they felt that. And that's real. Like, and it's like, it's nothing you can do to square that. You can't torture the perpetrator that imposed their will on someone else to make that person feel better that actually was a victim of circumstances. Of seeing that and feeling that darkness. And you can't convince me that. So I'm not religious whatsoever and never will I be. It's beneath me. That's how I feel personally. It's beneath me. Um. Yeah, even before the Messiah being Jesus. The first slave ship was named Jesus too, ironically. Um, they got no proof of nobody coming out there, motherfucking though, but it was what well they said they can name like ten other messiahs before him. But this planet, what, fifteen point five billion years old? It was even to exceed this planet before this even terraformed or what have you. Like, People seem to it just stop at an era and pick up from there. Nah, this way deeper than that. It's not. And then some other figure died for your sins. Believe what you want to. I, again, I'm bigger and I'm better than that. And my brain capacity is higher than that. For me to be confined in that small space of thinking. That box that entraps light. <laughs> and not me. 
No sir, Bob. Let's continue. Flat out. It's in there all the time. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Women are essentially second class citizens. And you know what I found out recently? That there was a woman before Eve. Depending on who you ask. <laughs> Yeah. So mm-hmm. what, what was that one? Well, that's not in the 66 books of the Bible that most people are taught in the product. Keep that in mind, like 15.5 billion years old, possibly older. And these languages, Japanese, English, and all that, it's not in the one of the sun. These languages been here. They was bestowed upon you by some figures of gods or extraterrestrials, interplanetary beings, uh, extra, dim- whatever. All this is very ancient, ain't even a word. So it it been figures like that before that and me looking at these stories and even seeing currently and what we're projected, what we're headed, it look like it's conflict no matter the era. You have reptilians that walk and assume the form of a human, very intelligent, with higher brain capacity and neural pathways unlocked, but they need to feed off a impressionable species to sustain life or to get a eu- euphoria like high off uh, off your fear and actual blood dream across. It's life in the blood, I mean. And those are intelligent beings that decide to use their intelligence for evil. That's how the JFKs happen, how they get over it and on. The government been infiltrated. The more humans that's walking around in a suit, the most powerful, the cream of the crop that work underground or what have you, they're not human. So, but they're of intelligence, superior to you, you're inferior to them, but yet they decide to use it for evil and self-interest like that's what we just see and that's what we hear after all they have a conscious and a free will as well so I would think all of them can be evil right after all they have a free will they have a how you have interdimensional beings you have goats and spirits some are evil some are actually good some of them they meet you in the middle their self-interest or indifferent it's no different than you. It's the evil human, and then I'm a righteous one. But it's just, I mean, I guess you can't have one without the other. If it was utopia heaven like on Earth, I feel like a lot of people would take that shit for granted. It's like literally in human nature to take shit for granted that's free. That religion was free and bestowed upon you. You don't take it for granted, though, right? If they say you go and sacrifice your only begotten child, use MK Ultra on you, you're going to go up there and do it, buddy. They show you a project blue beam you're going to do what they you're going to be evil you're going to have to stay away from me because i'm going to grab the, the the sniper rifle and with the the treyarch charm camo and i'm going to snipe you up close because y'all are dangerous you religious npcs it's it's unutterable for it exists as an entity in lanes which transcends our material words or symbols there's no words to express what i think about you npcs i let's continue Protestant tradition or the 69 or whatever in the Catholic tradition, um, that's part of the Apocrypha. So they are, these are books of the Bible that didn't make it into, you know, Christianity as such that we... The editor's cut. Today. Yeah, it was an editor's cut, exactly. <laughs> when I'm just in time, and guys, look up the papal inquisitions. Enlisted, they killed 80 million men, women, and children in the most horrendous and torturous and blood-curdling ways imaginable came there where is your leader grab your leader and did made an example out of him turned him into a human kebab in front of everybody and you so traumatized and delusionalized at this point you going with whatever they say being religion and giving your power to this external source and it's a collective it's millions of people that believe in this religion so they energy they they the flower of life they biofield they taurus it all amplifies and, 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 and and goes against the speed of time, actualize and manifest and materialize a reality as a collective, like in a collective pool. Because so much people believe in it, so it's like it's real, I guess, at that point. Like, it's insane. And it makes sense why they control all the media and they won't let you buy any media, especially if you up my. Because they pump fear on you, because as a collective, you feel that fear and they conjure that energy up to use it for whatever, or for you to manifest what they propagate in, so it can actually. So it can actualize and manifest because all your, your your fears as a collective one person you can move a mountain so all of you combined is is literally god walking and y'all believe in it so it's real at that point that's why they pump fear on you because y'all as a collective feel fearful 
and then y'all act away. It's in your conscious and subconscious, and the collective subconscious and unconscious, and it it will sooner than later come about. That's science. That's physics. That's real. Well, that's it for this video. Don't forget to like the video if you like the video. Comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, DM me the link via X, formerly known as Twitter. Let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick, and Rumble. Hopefully you learned something today. I'll see you on the next video, man. I'm out.